Do I really love Jesus? So Valentine's Day was yesterday and this silly idea of love is that you get struck by Cupid's arrow and suddenly you get googly eyed and feel love for someone and nothing can stop you from being together. Is love really a feeling? If it is, there are things I used to love that I no longer love because I just don't feel the same way. I believe we've got it wrong. I don't mean to take away the romance of love, but feelings are not the best indicators of love. Actions are. I enjoy the feeling of love, but I've learned that feelings come and go, but loving actions should always remain with us. Scripture is truth, and the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He did what? He gave His only Son. He took a loving action to stop the pain of those He felt feelings for. He took an action to rescue the people that he had feelings for. He sacrificed his own desire. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Love was demonstrated, made tangible. And with that, I believe that love is measurable. We can literally identify love through what we see, hear, and touch. It's not just some abstract idea or feeling or chemical in our brain. In fact, if we look at the chapter in the Bible commonly known as the love chapter, we see scripture laying out what love is by explaining what love does. So starting at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, love feels patient. Love feels like being kind. Wrong. I said that wrong. Now let me read this as it is actually written. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. All of these state that love is an action and none of these say anything about love's feelings. So get this, at the end of that chapter it says in verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Faith is a feeling, hope is a feeling, but love? Love that is the greatest of these three things is something we do more than we feel. So do we, do I love Jesus? Do we really love God? We know Jesus summed up all of the scripture and said in Matthew 22 that we are to love the Lord your God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. How do we know if we're loving God? Let's look at the measurables. Is God being given the best of our time? Is he being given the best of our energy, our affection, and our attention? Look at what you're doing for God to identify if you are truly loving God. So let's work to discover if we're loving God well by taking a look at our schedule, at our daily agenda, at our bank account. And then lastly, the second greatest command next to loving God is this in verse 39, love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible says in all the law and all the prophets hang on these two commandments. If Jesus says loving God and loving others is the most important thing we can do, then we should take note. Let's just pray to the Lord to help us to love well, to love biblically, to love rightly. Don't confuse loving people with tolerating sin. There are some things we are not to tolerate because we love God and love people. But be encouraged because we're humans. We're not only, we not only want to love, but we want to be loved. And I encourage you with the truth of God's word that what you sow, you will grow. Love God, love others, and it will come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And remember, go ahead and love God because God first loved you. That's something that we can grow on.